the walkthrough video for Watkins Glen International. We'll take a quick look at each of the corners with commentary, as well as a solid flying lap around the track. It's a 3.4 mile course with 11 turns and a chicane to break up the backstretch. It's located in Watkins Glen, New York at the southern tip of Lake Seneca. It's one of my favorite tracks in the northeast and probably in the country, so let's have a look. Turn 1 has a downhill braking zone, so you'll want to get on the brakes early. It's downhill to the apex and there's good camber, so turn in late and get back on the throttle early. The exit appears uphill, but that's only because there's high banking here and that'll take some speed out of the car. Turn 2's exit is very important for the 3-4 sequence. Its apex is almost at the exit of the corner, at this orange mark on the wall here. The entrance to turn 4 is hidden by the crest of the hill in turn 3. Fortunately, the guardrail gets taller right where the curbing for turn 4 starts, so you can use it as a reference point to know where to place the car. The trick to the whole S's section is turning the wheel as little as possible while maintaining speed up the hill. Lower power cars such as a Miata or a Mini can do this sector flat out with no problem. The more power your car has, the more caution you should approach the S's with, as the car can get light at the top of turn 3. The braking zone for the bus stop varies wildly based on skill level and car type, mainly because the bus stop itself is actually a deceptively fast series of corners. Generally, the strategy is to brake late and hard, and then turn in for the apex of the first set of curbing. People new to this track should exercise care when using the curbs through the bus stop, as it doesn't take much to upset the car, and this is a very unforgiving portion of the course. Turn 5 is a downhill sweeping right-hander. The entrance and middle section of this corner are taken at about 50% throttle. If you get on the throttle too early, the car will understeer badly on exit and you'll wind up wide or in the guardrail. As you come down the chute, move the car back across the track to the right to set up for the entrance of turn 6. This corner will require some braking, but there are no markers. There is, however, a storm drain in the grass on the right-hand side of the track that you can use as a reference point. This, too, is a late apex with a downhill corner. However, it's more forgiving than the previous corner with the throttle application. Roll onto the gas smoothly and exit track right. Turn 8, or the toe, is a nearly a 180 degree uphill right hand corner. The elevation will take a lot of energy out of the car for you, but you still need a healthy amount of brakes on entrance. This is also a late apex, but for a different reason than the previous two corners. High power cars will be fighting a little bit of oversteer if they get on the throttle too early on exit. After a short uphill straightaway, turn 8, or the heel, will be a right hander that is over 90 degrees and has a slight downhill exit. Because of this, you want to hold your turn in very late, and even past the apex, pick up the power to exit the corner. Turn 9 is a deceiving left-hander. It has an uphill entrance that looks like it's flat. However, there's plenty of camber here to help hold the car. Again, we want to turn in late so the car is straight on exit and you don't get into the barriers just over the curb. Turn 10 is a very fast left-hander. There's plenty of banking to hold the car, so lower power cars like BRZs, Miatas, and Minis can take this corner flat out. Turn 11 requires a little braking. There's two braking points that can be used, the end of the tire wall or the sign on the outside of the fence. It's a right-hander with two major issues. Firstly, the apex of the corner is the entrance to the pit lane, so you want to be very aware if someone is pitting in front of you. Secondly, the exit curbing runs straight up into the barriers. Just as an example, I'm showing turn 11 here with a car pitting in. Notice even though I've completed the overtake, I don't cross the pit entrance line. Okay, so let's look at a full lap here. You're flat out down the front stretch, hard into the brake zone for turn 1, downshift, turn in a little late, but go for the bottom. We're trying to work as much of the camber of the corner as possible. Between 1 and 2, make sure nobody's exiting the pits before you turn into turn 2. You're flat out through turn 2, all the way up the hill. It's a late turn in for turn 3's apex, so that the car is straight as you go over this crest here. Turn 4, same thing, all the way flat. It's time to start checking your mirrors to make sure nobody's about ready to overtake you coming down the backstretch. If you're in a Miata, it's a good time to maybe catch up on some light reading. As you approach the chicane, hard into the brakes, get your downshifting done before the turn in. It's a straight shot through the entrance of the bus stop. Don't be afraid to get a little bit of this right hand side exit curbing on your way out. Ordinarily, you want to be mid-track here, but I had to overtake. Slowly wind the car down to the apex and get on the power here very late. As you work your way up to full power, start bringing the car back across the track, track right, to work up for the laces. Keep an eye out for the brake marker, which is that drain on the outside of the track. Again here, we're winding the car down to the bottom late and picking up the power late. Come back across to set up for the tow. Don't forget, this uphill is going to take a lot of speed from you, so throughout the day you can work on braking later and later. Again, wind the car down very slowly, 
be very, very ginger picking up the power here so you don't get some power on oversteer and head up towards the heel. Another good time to check your gauges, check your mirrors, get ready for anybody with more power than you that might be looking to overtake. Again, late on the brakes here and late on the turn in. Power comes on just after the apex and you track out to the left. Quickly but smoothly back to the right, getting ready for this uphill. Turn in nice and late. Be aware that the wall is very close to the exit here, so, you know, be a little more cautious on the power than normal. Down here to turn 10. Very fast left-hander. Stay in it. Track all the way out to the right. Come back, get into the brakes just before turn 11 here. Make sure nobody's entering the pit. Go down to the bottom, power out, and that's one lap around Watkins Glen.